Hi everybody, welcome to my kitchen, welcome to another Friday Night Curry Club. It's amazing to have you join me. Um, this is a very special one, as you might have guessed already by the different format and the different um, layout that we've got. Um, it's another one that is in partnership with WaterAid, so I'm very, very excited about this one. Um, as always, this is your opportunity to get as much out of me as you possibly can, so please keep keep those questions coming in as we go through the session. Um, as always, I like to give you all a big shout out before we start, so please do start saying hello, tell me where in the world you are, um, tell me if you're cooking, tell me if you're just watching, tell me if, um, if you've had a great day. Just all of that information is really, really useful to me. Um, it's a very special Friday Night Curry Club, as I said, um, because we have got an uh, amazing live guest that I'm going to introduce you to in a little while once I've said all my hellos. Um, and it's hopefully a really nice opportunity for you guys to chat and get more information about some of the work that Wartrade do. I'm really lucky in that we've got some Wartrade representatives that are on um, YouTube and they are on the chat. So if you have any questions about any projects that they're doing, about the work that they do across the world, then please do ask. There's a lovely lady called Kate who will be responding to you. Um, so please do ask away if you've got any questions. So who have we got? Who we've got, we got Mark and Sheila on Sheila's Cooking today. Hi, Mark. Hi, Sheila. Lovely to have you join. Thank you so much for joining in. And who's cooking, did you say? Sheila. Sheila's cooking. Okay, so you, you are in the hot seat, so hopefully it'll be delicious and Mark will really enjoy it. Who else have we got on then? We've got Nikki is cooking in Red Hill this evening with her dad who's cooking at home. Mum is putting her feet up this week. Okay, so you've got Nikki in Red Hill. Hello, my local um, friend. <laughs> um, and you're cooking for Mum and Dad, which is really nice. Welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. Lovely to have you join us. How many? We've have we got any got else? Debbie is here and Hi Gordon. Debbie and Debbie Gordon are here. Hi Gordon, how are you doing? Lovely um, to have you join as always. Lovely yeah. to hopefully you've got lots of chit chat that you're wanting to share with us because I know that you quite often have a lot to say, which is lovely and I love that. We've got Marilyn is Hi, in Marilyn. Vancouver Island. In Vancouver. Welcome. Welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. I hope you're they well. We're going to cook it later. It's morning at the moment. Uh, morning. So, yeah. So, are you going to cook this later? Yeah. Amazing. We've got May in the bus country. Hi, May. Welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. Amazing to have you join from the bus country. Yeah. And Amazing. we've got Daniel in Lisbon who is not cooking. Hi Daniel, how are you doing? Um, I know that we had a few little issues beforehand, so we're just going to sort of take it easy and let people join. Um, there was a little bit of an issue with the link that I've shared, so apologies, you know me and tech, we have these issues every now and again. But um, thank you for joining. Um, so if we're going to go on and start a little session, I would first and foremost want to introduce you to an amazing an amazing character um we've got the lovely chileshe chanda all the way in zambia and he is going to be joining us because we are cooking one of his dishes hi chileshe hi hi harry how are you doing how is it i'm very well how are you Oh, great. I'm um, doing fine here in Zambia. Very nice weather. It's warm and uh, a bit cold sometimes. So it's a mixture of things. How is How are you doing in London? Not too bad. It's been really miserable today. It's been cold and a little bit wet and not brilliant. So it's... Uh... It is what it is. It's London. That's what that's what life's like. But, um, but you're normally... It's yeah. normally quite hot where you are at the end of the year. No, 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 no. Uh, we are just um, we are just beginning the, the cold season. Uh, it's 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 cold here in Zambia around May June. Uh, that's what we call the cold season. So we are almost at the beginning of the cold season. But everything is okay, I guess, in terms of weather. The sun is still coming up quite brightly, and um, yeah, it's nice. 
Amazing. Well, thank you for joining me on the Friday Night Curry Club. Thank you for taking time out. What time is it in Zambia? Uh, well, this is just about um, what we, 19.24, uh, 7, Perfect. almost 7.24. Yeah, PM, okay, yeah. Perfect time to be having dinner then. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, so that, so today we are cooking one of your dishes. So this is a dish that you've sort of talked to me about and told me about over the last couple of weeks. Um, and I've sort of done a few little tweaks and a little changes. Um, and we're going to be cooking this dish. But it's a very classic Zambian-style dish. Yeah. Yeah, it okay. is. Um, you know, in Zambia, we, we love fish um, uh, because we have got many rivers here. And um, so I, I, I thought the fish would do for most of us. And I, it's one of my favorites, I can confirm. Ah, excellent. Okay. And do you do a lot of cooking? Um, once in a while, I do. Uh, not not like you, honestly. <laughs> you are the expert. <laughs> oh, well, it's lovely to have you join me. Thank you so much for coming along and um, teaching me a new dish. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through everything that we've got here. And for those of you who are cooking, um, we will take it easy so that you can um, cook along with me. If ever you feel like I'm going too quickly or I'm going too slowly, please do let me know on the chat because Naya is here with me. She'll be able to shout out and tell me to slow down. Um, so we are cooking. So I'm using um, some sea bream. Obviously, this isn't the fish that um, Telesho would probably use on a, you know, if he was cooking at home. But we'll talk a little bit about that later. Um, I've got some sea bream. If you if you don't like to use whole fish, you can use fillets um, if that makes things a little bit easier for you. Um, for those of you who are cooking a vegetarian option or a vegan option, um, I did suggest using aubergine um, steak. So just get an aubergine and just slice it lengthways and you can use that and you can put the spices on it and it will cook beautifully. Or um, I did also say you could use a slab of tofu or you could use some um, cauliflower. So if you get a whole cauliflower and you slice it, so you get some nice big sort of steaks of cauliflower, that works really well with this dish as well. So there's lots of options. And as I say, never ever, you know, don't not cook something because you think you haven't got the right ingredients. There's always ways and means that we can work around that. So I've got my fish. Um, it's been cleaned, it's been gutted, um, I've taken the scales off. So make sure that you are in that place that you've got your fish and it's ready to go. Um, I have also got my spice tin, which um, I can talk to you about if you want to talk to me, um, if you want to ask any questions about it. Um, I have also got, we've had a oh. question about cumin seeds, will ground cumin do? Ground, if you've got ground cumin rather than cumin seeds, that's absolutely fine. It's exactly the same thing. It's just been ground. I, I just like to use fresh whole spices and grind them myself. But yeah, absolutely, you can use um, ground if that's what you've got. So for this dish, we're going to actually be making the masala that goes, um, that's the spice bit that goes on the fish. Now, I know a lot of people buy fish masala in packets. That's fine too. Um, Telesho, that's something that you would normally do. You tend to buy the packets of ready blended fish. It's, it's called a fish masala, isn't it? Yes, correct. Uh, I think here we, we buy the already mixed one, the, the fish masala. We rarely um, begin from uh, the initial stage of mixing or making the fish masala. We buy the already made one uh, okay. from uh, some, some shops, yeah. So I'm going to take you back a step and I'm going to show you how to make that masala. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> so we're going to be using our spices. We're going to use coriander. We're going to use cumin. We're going to use some black pepper, which I've got here. Um, we're also going to put some curry leaves in there, which are these beautiful things, um, and some fenugreek as well. So we're going to grind all of that to make our fish masala. 
the other ingredients I've got, I've got two red chilies. Now, Chileshe, do you like your food spicy and hot or do you like it a little bit more? I mean, I don't know. So in Zambia, do people like hot, spicy food or do they prefer it a little bit milder? We have a mixture. I think there are people who love it really hot and um, of real I like it mild I don't okay. like um, uh, too much chili but um, a lot of people I know my friends they almost like chewing the chili uh, as as you know as fresh as it is <laughs> amazing I like that as well that's good um so I've got some red chilies that I'm using I've got some um uh, garlic I forgot what that was for a minute so I've got some fresh garlic I've got some ginger I've got some yeah. lemon onion, I've got um, tomato, and then green pepper. And then I'm not sure if this is um, an authentic part of your recipe, Chileshe, but I've got some coriander that I'm going to be putting in as well. Is that okay? Yeah, th that's fine. Um, the ingredients look perfect. Um, we can, you know, they are also found here, those uh, ingredients. Yeah. Um, the only extra addition maybe is the fresh coriander because that is not mostly what we, we add to the food. But, you know, uh, it's something nice to try. Uh, and let's, let's go for it. Excellent. Okay, great. So are you guys ready to cook? So if those of you who are watching, are you ready to cook? Are you ready to get going? Give me a little thumbs up and let me know. So I'm just going to pop my fish to one side first. And I'm going to get all of the other bits and pieces prepped. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get all of the ingredients ready that we're going to stuff um, into the fish. Right, Chileshe? Correct, correct. We need to make sure they're well mixed and um, um, what do you call that? Uh, is it grinding? Uh, I don't know. The, yeah, then uh, make sure you make the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, do you, so Chilesha, do you want to talk me through um, how you would normally chop up your peppers and tomatoes, garlic and chilli just to put it inside? Would you normally grind it so that it's all um, mushed up or would you have it small and chopped up? Yeah, I think I would go for small and chopped up. Um, okay. Yeah, but, but to be honest, sometimes um, if, if, if you are somewhere far from home or um, at a camp, you, you may not have all the luxury to chop stuff like that. Sometimes oh, no. you just smash them, smash them, okay. and put them by fill it in. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, I'm starting with my garlic. So I'm going to chop that up first. I like quite a lot of garlic, so I'm going to put in ooh, about five or six cloves of garlic, is that okay? Is That's the fine. scaled, Gordon has asked. And how do you do it without getting scales all up the walls? So the Gordon's just asked a question about the fish. Yes, the fish is descaled um, because you it's just not going to be very nice to eat scales. Um, you, what I tend to do is just use the back of your knife, and usually in the sink, and just scrape backwards. Um, it, the scales do tend to sort of go all over the place, but, you you know, it's, that's just part and parcel of cooking. Chileshe, do you have any tips about, um, you know, how you would descale fish? It's exactly as you have put it, Harry. Um, the best is you, you put it in the, uh, in the sink and, um, you know, the scales go from the head to the tail. So... You need to hold the tail and then go the opposite direction when uh, descaling the fish. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but you need to be careful, especially with the eyes. Sometimes the scales flip and fly in the air. And if, if you're not careful, it can do something like that. But normally it's safe uh, once the fish is soft and um, uh, under the, underwater. So you'd normally put it underwater and then descale your fish. Yes, yes, yes. Go, yeah, it's it happens like that. Yeah, normally. Okay. Lovely. So you're getting lots of hints and tips here. Um, Chilesha, you mentioned that um, fish is very, very common um, as a food ingredient in Zambia. Um, what kind of fish would you normally 
eat or you know share or have you know are there lots of different types of fish or what kind of fish would you normally eat yes uh there, there are different types of fish we find in our rivers um yeah i don't know sometimes the names are varying from place to place um, yeah but brim is a common one uh we do have tiger fish um yeah. i don't know harry do you know tiger fish tiger fish mm, have you ever seen it it looks I like don't um, i don't think i have <laughs> is it yeah, quite so there's, yeah there are lots and lots of uh types of fish we have um there's what we call barbo fish uh it's some um it's, it's it doesn't have scales quite slippery if you are holding it or touching it uh, there are different types of fish in zambia and people eat depending on their preference okay. so um, yeah we have a lot but i love uh brim uh, especially the brim from uh, zambezi river uh, the zambezi brim i love it sounds delicious but um so most of your fish is freshwater fish so it's river fish that's right isn't it correct correct uh there are a few people who are doing um fish farming it is called uh where they are growing the fish from the fish ponds and um, uh, things like that but most mm -hmm. of it is from the river the freshwater uh, fish interesting so that's a bit different so just so that you all know what i've done so far all I've done is I've got my garlic, which I've chopped up really nice and finely. And I've also chopped up, my, oh, other side, my red chilli. Um, and I've tried to do that really nice and finely as well, just so that we can mix it all up so you're not biting down on big pieces of chilli. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, slice up my fresh ginger. Um, before you do that, did you use chili? Did you use the chili seeds in? So a question has just come up about chili seeds, and I, I probably answer this every single week. So yes, um, when I chop up a chili, I use the seeds. I use the whole lot because it's a real pain to take the seeds out. Um, I know it's something that's that tends to be done in a lot of Western cuisine, um, but I just think it's a bit of a faff. If you don't want your food to be as hot and you're worried that the seeds are going to make it hot, just use half chili, chop that up, use that. And then the other half, you can just pop in the freezer and use another time. So um, I don't like to waste food and I will always sort of save it. But if, if that's your worry that you think it's going to be too hot, just use a little bit less than you think you need. Um, so all I've got in here is my garlic, my chilli, and I'm just about to do some ginger. Now I'm going to chop up my ginger really nice and finely. You can grate it if you want to, but this is something that I wanted to ask you about, Chileshe. Um, ginger, so in the recipe that we talked about, you didn't really have fresh ginger in there. Is ginger something that's used in um, Zambian cooking or not so much? yeah uh it's it's present ginger is uh present in many of our foods nowadays including um sometimes just um, um uh, eating it the way it is you know many people have, uh, have have started eating ginger as raw as it is and it's quite it's fetching for uh, quite some money on the market yeah fresh ginger and garlic uh they are some of the things which are costing very much on the market and oh, so it's it's quite expensive to buy, is it? Yeah, um, it's part of the, um, what are they, we call them uh, high high returning crops. You know, they, they, oh, okay. they're quite expensive, yes. And, okay. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's available. People use it different ways, in different it, ways. Yeah. So um, because it's it's got lots of health benefits, I guess that's why people are starting to eat it from just just the way that it is, just to get some of those properties into their bodies. But that's exactly. quite interesting. Okay, so I've chopped up the ginger and I've put that in as well. And then I'm just going to chop up some tomatoes, um, a pepper and onion, and I'm gonna add that into here so that it all mixes up beautifully. Um, before I forget, I must let you all know that um, I have got a competition um, that's on 
Twitter at the moment, and all you need to do is just go to Twitter if you're on social media. Go to Twitter um, and just um, retweet the tweet about um, my go and fish curry kit and um, the water bottle. And all you need to do is tag in Water Aid, tag in Harry Gotra, and you can be in a chance to win. And then there's going to be three winners who will have the opportunity to win those um, the curry kit, which is just a really easy way of making a really nice fresh curry and you get a lovely um, water aid branded water bottle as well. So I just thought I'd mention that before I forget. We'll add the link into the chat as well so that you can see it. Um, okay, so Chileshe, I'm just chopping up my tomato. Is this right? Do I need to do it in like, little small chunks like this? Yeah, I think you are getting it. You're doing it very well. Uh, the, the little pieces there look so nice and uh, and and delicious. I think I think that's the way to go. That's the way we should uh, we should do it. Um, of course, people across the world, you know, many people have their different styles. Some they they chop those um, horizontal slices, nice, but they 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 make them uh, you know lie down or maybe they lay in the in the porch nicely. Yeah, but I think that's that's okay. Uh, that's okay. I think it's good. Okay, so I'm going to chop this up and I'm just going to add that into the bowl as well. So this is what's going to go inside the fish as the um, the, the stuffing almost. Um, and then I was going to ask you, when I am um, putting the fish on the foil, should I put some tomatoes and lemon and stuff on the foil and then put the fish on top of it so that... Um, you just got a little bit of extra filling that um, we can have with the rice later, or would you just just use what you're putting inside? Um, yeah, I think that, that yes, you can always um, do that if you want because sometimes um, the, the the onion, the tomatoes outside the fish, they make that kind of um, they make the fish not to be very hard and crispy. They make mm -hmm. it um, you know a bit tender and um, you find a bit of soup around it and it's very nice so you can do that depending on your preference yeah but uh, usually for me i just um uh sprinkle some some salt outside and i rely heavily on the stuffing inside <laughs> oh, okay so you really fill it all up with the stuffing inside all the yeah. curry the stuffing as well so, so the curry leaves and the spices that I mentioned earlier, that's what we're going to be grinding up to make a masala, and we'll be smearing that inside and outside of, and the, outside. of the dish. Yeah, oh, so yeah, lovely. That will be yeah. really lovely and aromatic and spicy and delicious. <laughs> so, so Tulashe, um, I'd be really, really interested to find out about the work that you do with Wartrade because. Um, from what I can, you know, the information that I've got. So Water Aid works in, is it 24 different countries across the world or is it 28? I can't remember, 24 or 28. But yeah. there's lots of um, staff that work on the ground. So that's what you do. What does that involve? Um, Water Aid is exclusively a WASH organization. And by WASH, I mean water, sanitation and hygiene. Uh, we are exclusively focused on uh, uh, increasing access to water, sanitation, and hygiene. Uh, right. And that's what makes it unique. So that forms a lot of um, what we do um, in communities, especially for those who are marginalized and the poor people uh, okay. of this world in different countries. In a nutshell, that's what water aid does. Yeah. Okay. And um, how long have you been with Water Aid? Uh, plus or minus seven, six, seven, eight years now. I started in 2014. <laughs> 2014, wow. that's when I joined Water Aid. Uh, it's been a wonderful uh, experience working with Water Aid. I've witnessed um, uh, some good things and you know some really yeah. depressing moments. You yeah. can't imagine, Harry, that um, in this day and age, there are people who really struggle just to find water. 
Uh, I know that most of the people who are watching us, they live in communities where you can just open a tap and drink that water without worrying. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes when we talk about lack of water, it's something which is hard to understand. But it is as it is. There are people who wake up every day uh, with the burden of finding water. Where would they find their water? And um, so it's, it's those moments which kind of make it very low uh, when you meet face to face with people. Mothers who have lost their kids to diarrhea, you know, um, and these are real people. These are not just statistics. These are, fi these, these are real people. I personally know many people whom I've met in the community um, in those situations, lack of water, suffering from preventable diseases. Some have died uh, when they were not actually supposed to die um, as a result of lack of water, sanitation, and uh, hygiene. So th th that forms the biggest driving factor behind the work that we do and personally my motivation because I've also been able to see the other side of things, Harry, where we have intervened in a community and we have transformed it by giving it water, access to water. And you can't imagine the joy that people you know, get to see and, and feel when they receive water. It's just, it's, it is unbelievable that in this day and age, there are so many, I think some of the stats say something like 275 million people globally that don't have access to clean water. So it is just unbelievable. I find it absolutely shocking. Um, and I'll just reiterate, guys, for those of you who are watching, if you've got any questions about what the water aid do, about how you can help, how you can donate, how you can volunteer, anything like that, um, please do ask away because we have got water aid um, um, the guys at work in the team and stuff on online and they are there to sort of share information with you and help you um, understand some of the work that they do. But just coming back to the recipe, which is what why we're all here as well. Um, so in here, look at that loveliness, of, lovely loveliness, it's not even a word, is it? So in here, I have got garlic, I have got ginger, I've got two red chilies, um, a chopped up green pepper, um, one chopped up tomato, um, what else? And I've sliced an onion just because I like my onions a little bit chunky, so I've sliced them. If you don't like them chunky like that, you can chop them up much finer if you prefer. Um, and then I've just added some salt in here as well, just because that will help start cooking it down, start helping it sort of... Um, break down a little bit before we stuff this amazingly delicious and aromatic stuffing into the fish. So that is ready. Is Have I done that right, Chilesha? Um, Chilesha, is there anything else that I need to put in there or anything that I've missed? No, 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 you got it perfectly and uh, it looks very, very good uh, from, from here. Very colourful, uh, beautiful, isn't course. it? Amazing. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm going to put that to one side and now I'm going to show you how to make this fish masala. How do you feel about that? Oh, I'm excited. I'm ready for it. I'm excited. Have you, Jill <laughs> has just said you seem to be ahead of us. So I'm not okay. sure she's caught up. So who's that? Sorry, Jill. Jill. Jill, I'm sorry if I'm running away with you. So whereabouts are you? I don't want to sort of run on ahead if you're still sort of chopping and, and so on. Um, so should I just give you another quick recap so to give you all time to catch up. So in the bowl I have got garlic which I've chopped up really nice and finely. I've got two red chilies. You don't have to use two red chilies. You can use um, one chili. You can use no chilies if you don't like your food spicy. That's absolutely fine. I've chopped up one green pepper um and i have sliced a onion and what else have i got in there tomato so i've chopped up um, a whole tomato there just to get that going and then i've added some salt just to start to soften it all down um are you with us now jill oh i can see yes. you've caught up jill brilliant i'm pleased and we've got some more hellos coming hi steve from wisconsin lovely to have you join um 
For those of you who have just joined in or just tuning in, make sure you tell me where in the world you are tuning in from. Make sure you tell me if you're cooking or just watching and you'll be cooking later. I always like to do a bit of a poll to see how far in this huge world that we live in, um, we get the furthest people. So usually we get we lots got, of people from Australia. We've got we've Crystal got, is here. Hi, Crystal from New Zealand. Zealand. Amazing, all the way to New Zealand. And we've also got their screen name is Love is Blind, who are in Zambia. So we've got somebody who's called, or their screen name is Love is Blind from Zambia. So <laughs> some of your neighbours are joining us, Chileshne. <laughs> Oh, that's great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy they're joining in and uh, I'm sure they agree with me that uh, that's the, one of the favorite foods we, we have here in Zambia. Amazing. That's so cool. I'm and so then, pleased. We've got Konstantinos, who is in Athens. Hi, Konstantinos. That's a beautiful name from Athens. Amazing. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to the Friday Night Curry Club. And um, welcome to meeting Chileshe all the way in Zambia. So, okay. Before we go on, we've just had a question for Chileshe from Gordon who said, how do you set up a water supply and purification plant in the new area, in a new area? Oh yeah, um, we usually depend on uh, what is what are called boreholes. Um, so basically it's to drill below the rock formation you know, if you if you look at the way the the soil is on the ground, you drill through the hard rock all the way down onto the fresh water, and that's what we use to uh, supply. We pump it out in a tank, and then we distribute to a a, a specified location. We, we do have chlorinators. Uh, chlorinators is um, what we use to purify the water and so um, it's mechanized in such a way that as the water is going into the tank it is being dosed with um, chlorine which is um, what we use to chlorinate and by the time it's being distributed um, it's uh, treated and safe for use basically that's how the the structure looks like and and is that something that you take part in as part of your job or do you sort of work more with the communities to find places that you that that you as a, a water aid person can go and help uh harry water aid has got um, um very uh, strong experience and expertise in the uh, technical expertise in, uh, yeah. in an area like that one uh, for water supply um and, and so we have we have a big team it's not uh, uh, maybe a small team they are they they are technical managers who manage specific things technically to make sure the community is safe and getting the water then there is a team which promotes hygiene for example hygiene from uh, um sensitization and education um because we consider that as a full package water sanitation and hygiene um and also we have the community side um where we do tell community stories for example um i'm actively involved in connecting uh, or making the bridge between water aid supporters and the communities that they serve so part of my job is to uh, try and bring these two people closer by making sure that they know about each other um in a better way um i i hope that understand i mean answers my your question that yeah absolutely i mean it's just so interesting There's so many different facets that you've got that that have to come together with a job like um with any sort of project or anything that happens um i'm just going to bring you back into the kitchen so um making that fish masala which is um the stuff that I can do. So all I've got in here are some fresh coriander seeds and I'm just grinding them down. Now coriander seeds are really aromatic. They're, they're like, they're almost lemony. Yeah. In so I'm just going to grind those first. And the key bits that are going to go into our masala is coriander seeds. I've got two teaspoons of coriander seeds in here. Um, then I've got, I'm going to add two teaspoons of cumin seeds. Um, I've got my 
curry leaves here, which I've just chopped up with a very sharp knife. So they're all chopped up. If you're using dry curry leaves, you can just add them into your um, pestle and mortar or spice grinder if that's what you're using, um, because they will just blitz up. So coriander seeds in here, when they get to about that sort of ground, because you're never going to get them really fine unless you buy it ground from the shop or you use a um, you use a spice grinder, but I thought I'd do it by hand today because I need to work up my muscles. So um, when it gets to about there, then we add the two teaspoons of cumin seeds. So those of you who are cooking, are you still with me? So all I've got in here is two teaspoons of coriander seeds, and I'm putting two teaspoons of cumin seeds in. And if you think I'm putting too much in, this little tiny little teaspoon that I have, it's not a teaspoon, it's half a teaspoon. So it's just, um, so I've just put four of those in. So we grind that up as well. Now, there's nothing more amazing than grinding your own spices because the aromatics that you come through, all of that lovely flavor, um, it's, it's all in there. And that's why I like to make up my own masalas um, because I just think it tastes much fresher, much zingier, um, but obviously, when you're in a hurry and you you can buy something that's okay too there's no right or wrongs but because it's a friday night curry club i just think it's better that i show you how i would do it in my kitchen normally so that you can um experience the aromatics and the smells that you can get okay so i'm just going to add the chopped up i'll just show you what it looks like so that's the chopped up curry leaves and these were fresh curry leaves so I've just chopped those up, pop them in as well. And the other bits I'm going to now add is some fenugreek. So that goes in. Now, if you are using fenugreek as a spice, you need to be really careful. You only add about a quarter of a teaspoon. But if you're using the dry herb, which we call mithi, then you can be a little bit more heavy handed with it. So that goes in, and the other thing we need is black pepper. So these amazing black pepper goes in. So half a teaspoon I'm adding there. I'm gonna grind all of that up. So how does that sound so far, Chileshe? It, it sounds good, and you know what? I, I love what you're using to crush the chilies, the, the, the water. <laughs> it's, it's very common here in Zambia. We, we call it Ivende, and you know, it's so nice to, to pound and crush things with. So it's, it's really nice that the tools are, are familiar. So what's it called? <laughs> say that again. Say the, say the oh, name of it. No. <laughs> it, it's quite heavy. I, I'm not sure if you say it, but it's called Ivende. Ivende. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> And is it does it is it the, is it the same thing? Is yeah. it the same sort of shape and all of that? Yes, ours is um it's made out of um wood. You know, they okay. cut a tree that way and then they they cave they 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 cave it um, inside and that piece that they're using uh is also made out of wood. Um I wish I, I had it nearby. I could have shown you how oh. how ours look like. <laughs> I love kitchen equipment. I love kitchen equipment from across the world. It's really interesting to see how people cook in their own countries and in their own homes and stuff. So I love all that. So you'll have to send me a picture of yours. Of course, I will. I'll take maybe. one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to show you what this looks like. Right, it smells pretty, pretty amazing. Wow. Wow. Okay. That, that looks nice. Now, for those of you who are cooking at home, if you are doing this bit, please, please do share in the chat what you think in terms of the, how does it smell? Um, does it, it just fills the kitchen with lots of deliciousness. So, so those are my spices that are going in here. So all I've put in there, coriander seeds, two teaspoons of, two teaspoons of cumin seeds, half a teaspoon of black pepper, um, some curry leaves that I chopped up really finely, and some fenugreek. So I'm just going to put that into here. Now, I think you've got some amazing pictures as well, haven't you, that um, we're hopefully gonna be able to share with everybody of some of the 
you know, some of those lovely pictures that you shared with me, um, the cooking that goes on in, in Zambia and that kind of thing. So hopefully we'll get to see those in a little while, which would be really, really cool. So that's what that looks like. Now into here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some turmeric. So is that a spice that's used um, a lot in Zambian uh, cooking or not really? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. You know, like I told you earlier, for us, the fish masala, we buy it. <laughs> it's done already. already. Yeah. 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 So what people put behind there, uh, I'm not yeah. privy, but I like it. <laughs> yeah, amazing. So I'm going to put some turmeric in here because that gives that lovely colour and it gives a little bit of earthiness. And I'm also adding a little bit of chilli powder because that gives it that warming colour as well. So once you've got all of your ingredients in there, just mix out. Now I'd be interested to see, Chileche, if this looks, I'm just mixing it, if this looks like the powder that you buy. So you'll have to tell me, I'm just going to add a little bit more. So, does that look yeah. like the powder you buy? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the <laughs> color it has. We buy it in sachets, you know. That's exactly how it looks like, yeah. Amazing. Okay, yeah. so can we just ask, Mark has asked, you've got tin foil out with something on it. The boss wants to know what is on the foil. Okay, so when I was cutting up the um, bits that I was going to be stuffing into the fish, what I did was I just took some of the slices of onion and I've just put them onto this tin foil here. And I've also put a few slices of tomato on here as well because that's what I'm gonna lay the fish on top of when, um, when I fold it up in the foil and ready to bake. Now, for those of you who are cooking, I suggest you get your ovens on and I would put your oven on it to about 200 degrees so that it can get warm. Mine's already on um, because we're going to now stuff the fish um, and we're going to sprinkle it with um, our seasoning and um, all of those bits and then we're going to put it onto the foil. We're going to fold up the foil so it holds it really nice and tightly inside um, and then we're going to cook it in the oven. So what I would like you to do if you are cooking with your spice blend, now Telesha, you'll have to tell me if this is correct, but I thought the best thing to do would be to put some oil in here and then I'm going to use that to smear over the top and inside the fish. And then I'm going to fill the inside with the, the, the filling that we made earlier. And I just thought that would be better because it would he help it cook on the outside. Is that what you would normally do? Exactly. Um, I think even uh, to start with the tomatoes on the foil paper there, um, sometimes if you put the fish directly on the foil paper, it, it gets stuck. So uh, it's, it's a brilliant idea that um, yeah, you okay. put some some cushioning there, like uh, some tomatoes, so that when you wrap or when you're unwrapping, um, it, you're able to lift it without problems uh, or uh, challenges. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. about the oil and the the oil and the the spices outside, I think the oil will make it stick nicely to the uh, outside of the fish. Okay. And, uh, make Mix well, so I really agree. You can go ahead and add some so oil. To add. The, to the so I'm just so guys who are cooking, it's probably about two tablespoons of oil that I've added. I'll just show you what it looks like, and then I'm going to give that a mix. I just I have got a spoon somewhere. I just get a spoon out. So I'm going to mix that up, and then that that essentially makes like a spice paste. So if yeah. you can see. So you don't want it too loose, you want it fairly thick, but I think that just will help. Can you see? Yeah. That's yeah? Not, that's okay. Not... The other thing I'm going to add into this spice is I'm going to put some salt in there because I think that will help. So a little bit of salt to go in, just make sure we've seasoned it properly. There we go. So Chilesha, tell me, have you got any stories about some of the work that you've done um, with WaterAid in the past? Has there been any um, examples of work that you've done that, has, that have been really special to you? Um, yeah, there, there are several. And if I begin telling you, Harry, we can go on and on. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to, to, to tell you that um, water, as simple as it is, um, 
um, sounds to many people um, has got um, a very huge impact on people and communities. You know, when communities have got water, it means that um, their health has generally improved. Um, if their health improves, you can also see the effect of water into the education. It means kids will not be spending a lot of time looking for water. They will be at least spending much of their time at school learning. Um, water has got a relationship also with income. In the rural areas I've visited, most rural areas I've visited, uh, you find once people have got water, they are able to grow vegetables and uh, some of those ingredients which uh, we, we have today, uh, Harry, tomatoes, um, onions, and, and, and things like that, they are able to grow and sell. So you find that the introduction of water in the community has got a very huge impact on the livelihood of the people. And that's quite important, isn't it? Because by doing that and by working with the community to not just educate them, but give them the ability to grow vegetables or grow or produce something, it means that they've got a source of income. Correct. Correct. Their income uh, status Im Im improves and also their nutritional status improves because they will have food. Um, and also have time to spend on education, even even f as for kids, to even allow them grow and uh, you know experience the life of a kid um, in a normal setup. Because what happens in rural areas is that uh, most of the young girls, ten years, thirteen years, um, looking for water is part of their full time job. Uh, together with their parents. And you can imagine they carry heavy 20 liter containers from the river, from the whatever source of water which is nearby. And uh, growing up is not that easy in rural areas, but with water, life just uh, you know transforms uh, around. It, it just brings a, a fresh breath of life in, in people's lives. It allows children to be children because Correct. they're not having to work, they're not having to get up early, and find water so that they can't go to school. They can't get an education because of the fact that they just don't have access to basic human needs and it just stops yeah. them living their life. It's so sad, isn't it? Um, and that's why, you know, I think the, the work that you guys on the ground do, but also the whole team at War Trade is just such a, it changes, but it actually really does change people's lives, doesn't it? It does, it does, and uh, many thanks to uh, supporters, people who support Water Aid, um, and all of us who are joining us in the cooking. Um, indeed, it, um, the I with that sort of impact or transformation that is taking place uh, in the communities. Oh, amazing! That's really good to hear. Okay, so. What I have done whilst you've been chatting to us, I took some of the masala and I poured it inside the cavity of the fish and I just rubbed it inside so that we're getting aromatics and flavour penetrating from the inside out. I've then just used my fingers and I've just stuffed it with that amazing, lovely filling that we've just made. And I, because Chileshe said... I've really stuffed it full because he said that's the bit that he likes. So I've stuffed it really nice and full. Does that look good? Yes, yes, it does. It does look uh, very nice. Okay. Now, what I did was I brought my foil over here. So anything that's fallen out whilst I've been doing this work has fallen on the um, has fallen on top of the tray, um, and that's fine because we're going to cook it all. So, hang on, I'm getting, I'm getting hand signals that you can't see what I'm doing, so I'm just going to move these out the way. So, I've got my foil here, I've got my tomatoes, I've got and lots of sort of spices dropped on there, which is fine. So, look at that, looks amazing. Now, this is the bit that um, I think is quite important. So, now, Chaletta, you'll have to tell me if I'm doing this wrong, but what I would like to do is use this masala and just smear it all over the top of it. Is that what you would do, or would you normally just put salt and pepper on? If I were you, Harry, I'll, I'll make a small vertical, small, small oh, cut. I haven't, 
Oh, you yeah, are. Just, just a bit yeah. of the vertical lines there so that it sits in well um, as you put the. See? The, the, yeah, you know yeah. That? I totally forgot all about that. So this is really important. Oh, see, last time I, when I, I did um, a cook along with you guys, I forgot to use the tomatoes. This time I forgot to put the um, the cuts in the fish. So just cut the flesh just diagonally. And I should have done this before I started, but hey ho, you know we all make yeah. mistakes. But um, that's why you're here, Chileche, to tell me when I'm doing it wrong. <laughs> So oh, I've just yeah. made four little slits just on the outside and I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to do the same. Now that is going to help that marinade that we've just made seep into the flesh of the fish, which is where all that lovely flavour is going to penetrate in. So, we oh, I'm just, so pleased you reminded me. We just had a comment <laughs> Dennis in Malawi. He said, first of all, he said, Harry, I am salivating at the moment. Hi, Dennis in Malawi. Amazing to have you join and us. Welcome. He has said, water aid is really transforming lives, even here in Malawi, which is just absolutely so true. So oh, that's doing amazing. Amazing, work. amazing. Thank you, Dennis, for your comments, because do you know what? It's hearing things like that that make everything that we're doing, it sort of validates what we're doing. So I'm really humbled that you've joined us. So thank you. Um, okay, so should I say now that you've told me how I've done that wrong? So I've done that bit. So now I'm going to put the the, um, the masala all over it, and that will hopefully penetrate into that fish did you, beautifully. Did you put some of the masala inside the fish as well? So yeah, um, for those of you who um, are just asking questions, I put some of that masala paste inside the fish first just so that um, it sort of helps to penetrate those flavors in from the inside out as well. So absolutely, put some of that masala inside, then I stuffed it with the filling, um, and now we're gonna smear it all over the, the, the top. So look at that. Mm. This is a good recipe, Teleche. I'm really pleased you've shown me how to do this. So I'm going to use my fingers, which is what I would imagine you would be doing if you were cooking yeah. is that correct 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 uh, fingers do a good job because uh, <laughs> the mixing is really on point um yeah just like that that's that's great because you want to rub it into those lovely crevices and all of those little bits okay so i'm doing a good job you happy with that yeah Absolutely, you are you are you're doing it uh, exactly as I would do it. <laughs> now, tell me a little bit. So, if you were cooking this at home, how would you cook it? Because would you put it in the oven? How would you? What would you do? Um, if we, if you want, you can put it in the oven. But uh, I like it charcoal grilled. You yeah. know, if I finish wrapping it in the foil, I, I just put it um, on a small little uh, wire above the charcoal. And okay. then, yeah, I, I think it goes slowly like that, and I take my time. Um, I, I don't just rush. Slow, slow it. and let it and let it just cook in its own time. Yeah. So, yeah. so, for those of you who are cooking with me, um, obviously I'm going to be doing this in the oven today. But as I said in the um, post that I've been putting up over the week, that this makes an amazing dish to have for the summer on the barbecue. So if you wanted to cook this on the barbecue, um, you would do exactly the same as what we've just done. Wrap it up in this foil, and then you can just put it on the barbecue, just as Chileche said. So either over coals or on your barbecue, it would work beautifully. So make sure, as we've got summer coming our way, because it's going to be beautiful, it's going to be lovely and hot this year, I have absolute faith. Um, make sure you get this recipe into your repertoire to do on the barbecue. Now, I'm just going to go and wash my hands. So while you do that, we had a question earlier for Chileche of, from Gordon. Um, so he was talking earlier about the water supply and the purification plants. And then he asked, how are they powered? Is it solar power? Um, yes, uh, some water schemes um, are solar powered. Most of them are solar powered because 
we work in areas where sometimes even finding electricity is um, a challenge. So as part of water, it's work, innovation, and um, uh, we, we do uh, put up, uh, up solar-powered um, uh, water schemes. Most of them are solar-powered because, as you may be aware, we have a lot of sunlight here in Zambia. <laughs> it's very hot uh, sometimes, especially in October, um, and very sunny. Um, so what, uh, solar energy really works uh, for us in many communities where we have put the solar-powered um, uh, water schemes. Amazing. And we had a question um, asking, what is the best drink to go with this dish? Wine, lager, Coca-Cola? I'm going to let you um, answer that. <laughs> uh, Harry, do you Before want you to answer, answer that? that? Drink, okay. Should I put lemon juice on this? Or should I put some slices of lemon in there? Or should I squeeze lemon over the top? Um, some people just squeeze it. Um, yeah, squeeze on top. Point. Yeah, sometimes even after the fish is Afterward. ready. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, some... yeah, that's fine. I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> so, yeah, tell us, Chilashe, what drinks would you normally have with this? I think people are asking because last week I did a whole thing about wine and, and spices and Indian food. So I think people are quite interested in what you should drink. Um, it might be quite good to look at this. I'm just going to, while you're talking, I'm just going to let you zoom in to see how I fold this. So, yeah, what do you, what, what would you suggest about drinks? Um, really, I think it depends on uh, <laughs> each person's preference. Uh, some people love eating that with a beer. Um, um, it depends. Um, I wouldn't say that... Um, um, you you just uh, there's one uh, a selection of a drink that you can take. Yeah, I think just try it out. Depending on your preference, uh, it it can work uh, with almost the, any other drink. Yeah, I think um I think um a nice white wine would work really well with this because um just something that's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. So something like uh Viognier would work really well with this because you've got the fish, you've got the spices. Um, and it would just be amazing. Um, if you were cooking this on the barbecue, a lovely rosé, um, um, I think would be really nice as well. Or some bubbles, some champagne or some Prosecco, whatever you, your preference is, I think would work really well. So there is my package. What do you think, Chileshe? Have I done a good job? Whoops. Lovely, go. lovely. It, it, looks, it looks lovely. Um... Yeah, and you know, depending on the size of the fish, you can roll it once, twice. Uh, but, but that looks good uh, uh, for now because the fish is quite small and you wrapped it well and it looks good. So the reason for wrapping it well, obviously, um, if you were cooking this on the charcoals, it protects the outside of the fish. But also the heat will create steam, which will help to penetrate the flavours into the fish and it will help to cook it. Um, so make sure that there's no holes or gaps or anything that steam is escaping from because you need that all in there to cook it. So I'm going to pop this into the oven now. So my oven is at 200 degrees. I'm going to put this in. I think this is probably going to take about 15, 20 minutes to cook. So I'm going to put that in now. And then we're going to have a little chat about rice because I know you have a, what shall I say? You have some opinions when it comes to rice, don't you? To let you know. we did, a lot we did. of them. We have a question asking which rice is best with this one, short or long grain. Okay, so we are going to talk about rice. I'm just going to have a little clear down um, and we're going to have a little chat about rice. So, Chileshe, when we talked earlier um, in the week, we talked about um, the sort of staples that you have in um, Zambia for dishes like this. So what, what kind of staple carbohydrate bits do you have? So you have rice and you mentioned, um, was it a corn? Yes, oh, it's corn. called Inshima. It's called what? It's Inshima or Shima? Shima. <laughs> you call Shima. it pao. Okay. Tell us about, tell us about that. It... <laughs> Some people call it pao. Um, of course, um, the staple we have is called uh, um, Millimil, uh, usually it's, it comes from 
you know, there is white corn. Um, yeah, maize. Fry and maize, yes, yeah. maize. Uh, so the maize meal is what we use to make a thick porridge, uh, which we call shima. Um, so that can go with that uh, if you want to eat it. Uh, also, you can use it. You can use rice uh, uh, okay. to eat uh, that with. Yes. Okay. So we decided that we were going to cook rice, um, and you guys are not going to believe it here. So Chleshe is a mind of information when it comes to rice. He. <laughs> We had a conversation and it took a while. So I'm just going to show you before Chileshe um, has his discussion with us about rice. Um, I'm just going to show you what I'm going to cook. So this is what I'm going to make. So this is um, basmati or basmati. So this is basmati rice, which is what we would use in Indian cooking um, uh, as, a, as a staple. So we always use basmati rice. Now, when we were talking, so actually, before I go on to that, I'm just, if I just tell you what I'm going to do with this. So I'm going to go and wash this rice and then I'm going to put double the amount of water in and I'm going to let that cook um, whilst we carry on our conversation. Um, so if you have put your fish in the oven and if it is cooking away and doing what it should be doing at 200 degrees, um, you want to get your rice ready. So just get your rice into your pan wash it until the water runs clear, double the amount of water, and then we're going to start cooking it. Um, whilst I'm doing that, um, Chileshe, I would love for you to talk about the rice that you have in Zambia, because from the things that you told me when we were having our conversation, I was just blown away. Um, so do tell us. So the rice that you have in Zambia is very different to the rice that we're used to here in the UK. Is that correct? Yeah, of course. Um, we do have uh, very nice rice here. By the way, Harry, even uh, basmati rice is available uh, on the Zambian market. We, we okay. can buy it from the shops. Um, uh, depending on your preference, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But we do have uh, special rice here in Zambia, and it's called different names depending on where it is coming from. So there is one which is called Mongu rice. Mongu rice comes from a town called Mongu. Um, if you if you if you search your Google Kuomboka ceremony, you will see a town called Ma Mongu, and that's where the, this rice comes from. There is another type of rice which comes from uh, Nakonde, <laughs> a town called Nakonde, and it's called Nakonde rice <laughs> because it comes from there. And there is the last one I know which is called Chama rice. The difference uh, uh, from this type of rice is um, just the way it smells, um, its, its aroma is different. And if you've lived long in Zambia um, and you find somebody boiling uh, mongo rice, you would know that, well, this rice is um, uh, from Mongo, depending on the aroma that it, it, it gives you. Um, I wouldn't recommend people to use, um, uh, you know, hurry those pre-cooked uh, rice. Uh, it's really not so nice. <laughs> you know, when, when I was there, I, I ate some rice, which uh, uh, is pre -cooked. Well, when you were in the UK? Yeah, several times I've been there. Yeah. I I say, oh my God, these guys, <laughs> what sort of rice is this? <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but um, if you want to know the aroma around rice, uh, visit Zambia. Come and ask for mongo rice. <laughs> yeah, we just had a question asking: Is Zambian rice fragrant? Fragrant. So. We've had some questions about Zambian rice. I've just seen it on the screen. So is Ram sorry, is Zambian, Zambian rice fragrant rice? So can you tell us? So you said that it, it depending on where it comes from, whether it's Mong, um, yeah, yeah, or Mongo, or Nakonde, Nakonde, you can tell. So when you're cooking that rice, you can almost tell from the fragrance and the aroma which yes. rice is cooking is that correct exactly you know it's organically grown it's grown from the plains along the zambezi river um and it's all natural uh less um what do you call this 
um, uh, less chemicals, so to say. It's yeah. so natural and organic. So it's very nice. Um, I would say one of these days I, I I may carry a small pack and come and share with your audience, Harry. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm so um, intrigued by it that I I would I. So the, is the rice is it um, is it like white grain rice like basmati or does it look different? Is it darker in color? Is it um, thicker? Is it does no, it look different or is it exactly the same? It's pure white. It's pure okay. white. Um, the grains are not as long as uh, they are in basmati yeah. rice. Um, yeah, so but they're a bit, a bit long. Yes, a bit shorter. Yes, very nice. Um, put some some near me so that I show you. But that's how it looks. Basmati is a bit long. Um, yeah, not 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 that long, but um, yeah, yeah. it's a bit okay. Longer. Amazing. So. Uh, Thank you for sharing that. It's, it's really, really interesting. Um, I think we'd like to. So I know that you, in the work that you've done, you've taken lots of amazing pictures and you've got some amazing sort of stories and that kind of thing about Zambia and the work that you've done. And I'm, I'm hoping we're going to be able to see some of those pictures. Is that? There we go. So tell us about this one. What's this? Ah, well, this one is the uh, environmental health uh, specialist, the lady in white. Uh, this was during, um, we had a terrible cholera, cholera outbreak in Zambia, uh, and we were uh, kind of um, going door by door, sensitizing people uh, on hygiene and the fact that uh, cholera is preventable. So those are open markets where they sell food, and those make... Um, um, spreader super spreaders of um, even cholera once it has uh, broken out so that lady is an environmental health technician who was sensitizing the the community here in lusaka we had a, a very bad cholera out, outbreak yeah and the, so this and this one is this a market is that uh this is Yes, Harry, this is the food market. If you see those white uh, things there uh, in the white porches, those, that's Millie Mill, the one we use for making in Shima. And you see those small things, those are small fish called carpenta and tomatoes in the background. Yeah, so that's a, it's a small market, but just in the neighborhoods, you know, like a, a small grocery shop in the neighborhoods. Uh, just oh, there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. So it's a home and a shop at the same time. So, um, oh, I see. So they, they, so, it, so this would be somebody who grows that produce and then then sells it outside of their home and so on. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, um, yeah. So the next picture you see, Harry, it's um, that I looks beautiful. The... What an amazing <laughs> picture! Is this one of your pictures? Yes, yes. Uh, oh, I, wow. I took this picture. Um, uh, during the cholera response, um, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, Harry, that um, our communities sometimes get so much affected to uh, water, water waterborne diseases, um, and this is right in the city here in Lusaka, in the slums. So one of those girls is a survivor of the deadly disease cholera, and yeah. um, this was a post intervention when their home was fixed with some access to water. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Gosh. Oh, look at those happy faces. Yes, yes. <laughs> Kids uh, love water and it, it really just injects a lot of life in the community. Um, as you have seen, um, it's brilliant. Wow. So um, just to let you guys who are watching know that um, if you want to find out any more information about Water Aid or the work that Water Aid have been doing in Zambia, um, then you can go to, I can't remember what it is, www.wateraid.org forward slash Harry. I'm putting a link in at the chat for everybody. So now. we'll put a link in, and it's just got some really lovely information about the work that, that, that's going on and the work that, that um, the guys are doing over there. Those shots are beautiful. It's just so lovely to see happy faces, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, Harry. Yeah. Okay, so my rice is coming up to the boil now. 
So I'm going to let that boil for a little bit and then I'm going to turn it down and put the lid on. Now, when you cook rice, um, Chileshe, can you tell me how you cook your rice? <laughs> It's it's exactly as you are doing it. And, uh, <laughs> no 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 strange uh, processes and uh, formulas, but it's exactly as you are you you are doing it. Okay. Um, we just boil it. Um, sometimes when boiling, we do add just a a bit of oil so that um, it's less. Uh, it's you know, it doesn't stick. I'm going to do that because you've told yeah. me to. So a little bit of oil goes in there. I'm going to pop that yeah. in. Would you ever flavour your rice with other yeah. ingredients or do we you had, keep it simple? We had a question, well, someone was saying sometimes Indian rice has spices added when cooked. Maybe are there Zambian spices that get added to the rice while cooking? So would you ever add any spices or anything to, to your rice? Uh, you yeah, it really depends on the person. Like, like I told you, uh, our rice is very nice. It has got that rich aroma yeah, yeah. if you want to kill it you can put some spices but i would recommend that <laughs> so you see do you, you understand you guys what i mean when he's very very particular you thought i was particular about my rice but um <laughs> chileshe has taken it to a whole other level um amazing that's so cool we had a question earlier on from steve asking what other types of fish can we use so Chilesho, what other, oh, so for me, in terms of what other fish can we use, um, so we'll, we can both answer this, Chilesho, but for me, if I would, for, for a dish like this, I think a nice white fish works because it will absorb the flavours of the spices and the masala, the, spice, the fish masala that we've just made. Um, so we've used bream today. You could probably use bass. Sea bass would be lovely. If you wanted to go down the route of not using a whole fish and you wanted fillets, you could probably make up that marinade and you could use it even on like chunks of um, monkfish or something like that. Even like big chunky loins of cod, you could marinate it and, and bake it. So you can use it with any fish you like. Um, but the reason that we've gone for a whole fish is because that is traditionally how you would cook fish in Zambia. Um, Chileshe, would, so would you use this same recipe for different types of fish? I know we talked a little bit about fish earlier, but would you use this same recipe in different fish or would it be specifically um, the more sort of meaty bream type fish that you would use this in? Yeah, yeah, I think I would recommend the meaty bream to uh, go with this type of recipe. There is some fish which is, uh, especially, you know, when you are doing the opening where you put the stuffing, some yeah. of the fish doesn't allow you enough space to do that. But the brim and uh, fish like the brim are really perfect for, for, for this type of thing. And it's the whole fish. You don't take away the bones. As in Zambia, we, we eat fish uh, with the bones. <laughs> yeah, and we sort, we sort the bones out, uh, you know, in the mouth. Uh, <laughs> so it's like they... <laughs> And do you know can what? I tell you something? <laughs> it's really lovely to hear you say that because um, in the West, generally, we're, you know, people are a little bit spoiled and people don't like bones. They don't tend to like anything that, that even whole spices, they don't tend to like. But when we were talking last week, Chilesha, you said to me that you would serve the rice with the fish and then you were very quick to point out and we really like getting our hands in and we just we enjoy breaking the bones up and, and you know <laughs> and and that's yeah. part of eating isn't it it's part of the whole experience it's not just about filling your tummy because you're hungry it's about the experience of putting all of that together and enjoying the food that's right isn't it is exactly exactly yeah yeah but if if you can't be very careful uh, it's advisable you go with boneless fish um but if i'm with you i will insist that uh we go slowly in it and take out the bones and and eat <laughs> <it>. <laughs> okay right so yeah. just to finish off i'm just going to chop up some fresh coriander um i know this isn't this isn't um standard to the recipe but um this is 
my Indian bit coming out. I just think this kind of a dish with that lovely masala that we've just made, um, with that fresh lemon that we're going to squeeze over the top, I just think the coriander would be is going to be amazing. So I'm just going to chop up some fresh coriander. And, and not just that, I just think it would just add that lovely, amazing colour um, to, to the dish. So I'm just chopping that up and I'm going to pop that into a bowl that I've got out here. So that goes in. Um, the other thing that I've got here are some chilli flakes. So we talked earlier a little bit about chilli. I do like my food fairly spicy. So um, another option I was going to give people is if you want to, once the fish has come out, you can put some chilli flakes on there. A little bit of heat, but it also gives a lovely texture as well. Um, so I've got some chilli flakes there and I've got my lemon that I've chopped up ready to go on that fish. Now, it's probably been in there for about, I'm guessing about 15 minutes. See, I never put a timer on. That's my other problem. I do a lot of things by guessing, guesswork. So I'm going to get the fish out. Just had a question to say, can turbot, turbot be used? It's turbot. A versatile fish. So turbot, I think, would be lovely with this. The other thing that I think would be really lovely with this is halibut. Halibut with these kinds of um, nice sort of fragrant aromatic spices works really, really well. But yeah, turbot, I think you are correct, would be really good with this. So I'm just going to get the fish out. Um, I'm going to look at mine. You can leave yours in there for the time being if you haven't, you know, if you think it needs a little bit longer. It probably does, but I think we'll just have a little check. Gordon's trying to work out today's colour coordination. So it's not so easy this week. Is it blue? Gordon, it's blue this week. It is blue. I don't have a blue top, so this is as blue as it gets. I've got a blue chopping board and I've got a blue pan, so you are on the money there. So... Are we going to zoom in to have a look at, at this amazing so opening? So are you looking, Tileshe? Are you yeah. Are you going to scrutinise yeah. my cooking? <laughs> oh, I can yes, I'm... smell it. Yeah, wow. Right, it smells amazing. Right, so I'm going to open this up. I don't want to tear it in case I want to put it back in for a little while, but slowly, slowly. Oh, oh amazing. Look at this. I don't really know how I'm going to show you. Right, because it's hot. Mm, you better be careful, Harry. <laughs> The, the foil okay. paper is usually hot. Can um, you see that? It's amazing. I uh, wish you could smell it. Look at that. <laughs> what do you think? Whoops, nearly dropped Gosh. it. What do you think, Chileshe? Lovely, lovely. It is. Um, looks good. Um, yeah, depending on the heat which somebody's using, it can take longer and um, yeah. uh, sometimes it can take a short time depending on how warm or how, how you have set your heat on your on in your on your um the, in the oven in the grill. Yeah, oh, that looks really good. And do you know what's really lovely is there's lots of juice in there, so that when I put the rice in with it, it's going to soak up all of that lovely flavour. So I think that mine is looking pretty good. Um. For those of you who are cooking, obviously it depends on the size of your fish. I can't see how big your fish is. Um, if you feel it needs a little bit more time, that's absolutely fine. But I'm just going to show you how we are going to plate this up, just so that we can um, not take up too much of your Friday evening. So I'm going to pop this onto a plate. Um, here we go. So it hasn't stuck to Leche, which I'm really pleased about. It's not sticking to the foil. It's just looking lovely. What do we look for to know if it's cooked through? So you will see, obviously, the colour will change on your fish. The other thing that I did um, mention, I think it's in the recipe, is that if you want a little bit more crispy, a little bit more of a crispy finish, um, what I would recommend is if you're cooking it in the oven, once it's cooked through, 
um, you just pop it under the grill for just just a few minutes and it will just sizzle on top and that will make that skin really, really nice and crispy. So it depends. Some people are quite happy to just take the skin off. But when you've got all of those spices on there, it's really nice just to, just for a few minutes, just put it under the grill and that will just make it all really nice and sizzly on top. So I am going to show you how this looks on here. Um, just going back to your question about what you should look for, you should look for it, it will just soften, the whole fish will just soften and you, you can tell when it's cooked because it just, you know, the eye obviously glazes over, but it ju you, can, you can just tell that it's cooked through. Um, and once you've, because you've stuffed it, there's not, it's not like great big chunks of um, flesh that you're waiting to cook. But it will all glaze over and you'll see that it just gets much more soft. Um, obviously, the other thing that you can do is just use your temperature probe. You want it to get to like just 70, slightly under 70, and it will be ready. So I'm just going to, just for the sake of plating up, I'm not going to lose any of this. Because this is where the flavour is. That's right, isn't it, Tleche? Yes, yes, yes. That's where the, the, the flavour is in the, in the juice. So you know, the, the spices are in there. So that, that's really lovely. Yeah. Looks good. So that's all juicy. I'm not going to lose any of this. So I'm going to pour that on. Don't worry, I'll show you in a second. I'm just making sure that it's all on here. And my rice is done as well. Perfect. It smells really fragrant. My rice smells amazing. <laughs> yeah, but my rice is great. Um, so nice. So I'm just going to pop this a little bit on the side. And um, so when you were plating up, Tileshe, you would just put your rice with the fish because then you take little bits and little bites of it. Is that correct? Yes, that is that. That's correct. Um, I enjoy just putting it by the side, and the fish is uh, next to it, and uh, everything goes in together as um, <laughs> as I'm eating. <laughs> Aha. So just to finish off, you said a good squeeze of lemon all over. Yes, um, you you can squeeze just a bit of lemon, and it depends on somebody's preference. Um, the way it is, it's good to go, but some people would like uh, just a bit of lemon um, sprinkled um, on the fish. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who have just joined or weren't here at the beginning, um, just to let you know that we are doing a competition over on Twitter. We're in conjunction with WaterAid. Um, all you have to do is go over to Twitter go to Harry Gotra, um, and the competition is the opportunity to win ha a Harry Gotra spice kit, which is um, a going spice kit, so it's a recipe to make going fish curry, um, and you can also win a water aid bottle. All you need to do is just retweet the, um, the competition post, tag in water aid, tag in Harry Gotra, share it share the link and it's open until midnight on sunday so go in there do it get your friends to do it post it out there and then um you are in with a chance to win those lovely prizes and water aid will be in touch with you to tell you if you're a winner so do have a look so i've just squeezed some lemon juice over the top i am also going to add some amazing fresh green coriander how does that look to leche and I'm gonna put a little bit of um, chili flakes on. That's just for me because I, that's how I like it. So there we go. So look at that. I will move this out the way so I can show you. So there we go. Whoops. Chileshe, what do you think? Can we hear? Wow, wow, that that's lovely. It looks uh, very nice. <laughs> it, the way the Zambian can like it, and many other people across the world. 
<laughs> so I'm That's lovely. It looks so nice. I'm going to soak all of those lovely juices up in the rice. But look at that. So that's an amazing Zambezi style grilled fish. Um, we've yeah. used green, um, but there are lots <laughs> of other fish that you can use, obviously. And um, Chileshe, what did we stuff it with? Um, we, we put um, uh, papers, tomato. Um, we also put ginger in there, some chilies, depending on your preference. Um, yeah, yeah, and some onions, if um, if you if you like. And some yeah. onions, yeah, that's it. And then the um, fish masala that I made was with coriander, uh, ground coriander, ground cumin, turmeric, chili, fenugreek, a little bit of salt. Um, and some black pepper, and um, then we then mix that with oil and just smeared it on the inside, smeared it all over the outside, filled it with that amazing filling, and then baked it in that lovely foil bag um, for about 20 minutes or so and served with some amazing basmati rice. Um, I still need to get my hands on that amazing rice that, um, <laughs> that uh, Chileshe has been talking about because I am very intrigued. Um, so that brings us to the end of our Friday Night Curry Club. Um, I hope you have all enjoyed it. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for taking the time out of your Friday evening to learn a little bit more about the work that War Trade do, um, to cook along with me. Hopefully you've got a lovely, lovely fresh fish dinner to have on a Friday night. Um, as always, I will ask you to take photographs of the food that you've cooked, share them with me on Instagram, share them with me through my app, um, because I'm sure the guys at Wall Trade would love to see them as well. So please, please, please do share those photos. Chileshe, thank you for your time. Thank you for your recipe. Um, thank you for just taking the time out and telling us um, just enlightening us a little bit more about the work that's going on in Zambia, about your country, about how amazing your country is. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've learned loads. So thank you for your time. Um, and I'm sure everybody who is um, watching wants to say a huge thank you to you as well. Have you got anything more that you would like to just finish off with? Just a big thank you, Harry, for hosting me. Um, and a big thank you to the many supporters that are supporting what I work across the world. And we say thank you very much um, uh, to everybody. Oh, bless you. Thank you so much. I'm really excited about digging into this dish. And I think lots of people who have cooked along are as well. Um, please do like the video on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. Give it a little bit of a share. Do follow um, both myself. You can follow Chileshe as well on his Instagram. Um, the other thing, we will be back next week with another um, Friday Night Curry Club, which will be very exciting, and I will post all the information about that out on Wednesday. Um, thank you for your time, as always. I hope you've had a lovely um, evening. Have a great weekend, and I will see you very, very soon. Um, Take it easy and thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Chilesh.